$1 invested in prevention saves $16 down the road. So focusing on prevention is important, not only economically speaking, this is smart, but it's also a safe life. Today on Expert Answers, we're asking how to address poverty in countries that are either fragile or in the midst of violent conflict. The data shows us that in recent years, violent conflict has spiked to levels not seen in three decades. Meanwhile, many other countries are fragile, meaning that their governments are unable or are struggling to provide basic services to their citizens. And they're facing increased risks, climate change, demographic change, inequality, and so much more. So what does that mean for an institution like the World Bank? Well, other data shows us that it's estimated by 2030, around half of the world's extreme poor will live in countries that are affected by fragility, conflict, or violence. Well, to learn more about the link between poverty and FCV and the bank's first strategy to address these challenges, I spoke to the man in charge of it all, Frank Bousquet. We have this term FCV, fragility, conflict, violence. Can you unpack that a little bit, help us understand what exactly does that mean? So fragility, it's about countries, uh, states, that have deep governance issues and lack of capacity to provide basic services uh, to citizens. Services in terms of justice, rule of law, but also basic services, education, health. And that's typically happening when states do not have the capacity to address some key drivers of fragility which can be environmental, social, economic, exclusions. So something like climate change could make them fragile? That's definitely part of it, yeah. obviously. So that's, that's what we define by the notions of, of fragility. Conflict, we understand, we know what it is, and violence, that's what gang violence, interpersonal violence, gender-based violence. One of the big questions I have is, the banks always kind of worked on FCV, but now this is like, if I'm not mistaken, the first big FCV strategy that the World Bank is rolling out. What has changed, like why is that? new strategy needed today? Well, you are right. The bank has been involved in fragility, conflict and violence over the past decades. In fact, after World War II, the first loan uh, for reconstructions of France, my home countries, was actually provided by the bank. So the bank has been working, but it was more on the reconstruction side. And over the past decades, the bank has been progressively involved more and more across the fragility spectrum. So it's not only about reconstruction, but it's also working more and more in crisis and conflict situation. So let's talk through this new strategy. Walk me through some of the, like, the key points of it. What is it attempting to do? The strategy is really building on all the progress made by the bank over the past decades. Uh, over the past few years, we have significantly scaled up in terms of financing. But as important as financing, the strategy aims to provide guidance to maximize our effectiveness on the ground depending on the situation. Working in FCV, is a core mission of the bank. Why? Because overall, over the past decades, poverty has decreased, except in those countries impacted by fragility, conflict and violence, where poverty is increasing. When it comes to prevention, you know, the bank, as you said, was born out of World War II and, and helping reconstruct Europe. Now we're looking at trying to head off conflict. Is that really the bank's job? Has the bank done this before? Definitely. It's, in fact, proper development. One dollar invested in prevention saves $16 down the road. So focusing on prevention is important, not only economically speaking, this is smart, but it's also it saves lives. And then on assisting during conflict, you know, when I think of big intergovernmental organizations working during conflict, I think of like the UN Blue Helmets or, you know, NGO actors like the Red Cross, Red Crescent. I don't think of the World Bank necessarily, like is the bank set up for this? Is it, is it really going to be working actively in conflict zones? Now, does it mean that we're becoming a humanitarian agency or a security agency? We are not. But what it means is that we have to work with other actors to have the security needed to provide development. So the bank's core comparative advantage is really not to provide humanitarian aid, water or blankets. It's about strengthening institutions for service delivery, strengthening the resilience of the states so that conflict doesn't spread across the countries, but also to help building back better and faster. Talk me through some of the practical changes about the way the bank operates that are going to be a result of this strategy. So a number of changes. First, as I mentioned, we are really scaling up our financing. So basically, we are putting our resource for those countries uh, that are impacted by fragility, conflict and violence and scaling up significantly. But the whole strategy is not only about financing. First, it's about putting our best resource, meaning human resource, our staff, on the ground. 
Second focus of the strategy, the first one being personnel, human resources, the second focus is about partnership. Again, I insist because it's very important, we discussed, partnership is key because all those protracted crises requires partnership between institutions that have different mandates. So as we sort of wrap up here, talk to me about the overall goal with this new strategy. Like, what do you hope that it accomplishes? To have an institution that is really building on all the scaling up that we have done over the past few years, to, best, to be best fit for purpose, having more staff on the ground, staff who have the right skills to develop in these challenging situations, to have operation program that have tailored approach and making sure that we are really focusing on addressing in a selective manner the key drivers of fragility. So it's really stepping up, not only with the financing, but also in maximizing our impact at all levels, policy, programming, personnel. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you. A huge thanks to Frank Busquet for his time. If you want to learn more about fragility, conflict, and violence, and the bank's first strategy to address some of these challenges, head on over to worldbank.org. And if you'd like to leave us feedback about this episode, send us an email, expertanswers at worldbank.org. Until next time, goodbye.